Jules Verne wrote 54 voyages stories, including Journey to the Center of the Earth, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and Around the World in 80 Days. Of the 54, three books contain ciphers. A runic substitution and transposition in Latin in Journey, a turning grill in Matthias Sandorf, and the one that concerns us right now, a Gransfeld substitution in The Giant Raft. Originally serialized in France in 1881 under the title La Yangada, The Great Raft is part mystery, part cryptography lesson, and part travelogue. The story involves one Yoam Garral, who is hiding in Peru under a false name, wanted in Brazil for the ambush of a diamond convoy traveling to Rio de Janeiro, the theft of the diamonds, and the murders of the convoy guards. Ortega, the true villain, is on his deathbed and he repents, writing a confession in cipher to be given to Garral to clear him of all charges. Unfortunately, Ortega's messenger decides to blackmail Garral, gets killed, and takes the key to the message with him. It's our job to break Verne's unbreakable cipher. What we know. Verne wrote in French for a French audience. So the message will use a 25-letter alphabet minus the W. The lack of Ws in the cipher supports this. And Garal's real name is Yuam da Costa. The full message is several pages long, and Verne only shows us one paragraph of the actual cipher, which he suggests may be the introduction. Probable words. Diamonds. In French, diamants. Yuam da Costa. And maybe Rio. We don't know about Ortega yet. To alert you up front, I'm going to use a hybrid solving approach this time. In step one, I'm going to use the Kaczynski test to find the period of the cipher. In step two, I'm going to write out the message in groups and analyze one of the groups to get the first key digit. In step three, I will decrypt part of the message with the partial key recovered in step two. In step four, I'll use the plain text that comes out for placing our probable word. That should be enough to recover the complete key. Then, in the final step, we'll decrypt the full message. I hope this will all make more sense as we go along. Looking at the cipher. We can immediately spot a couple of repeated triplets including DDQ and RYM. There are two repeated groups of four letters, but we can ignore them if we focus on the triplets for a Kaczynski attack. Let's first compile the list of triplets and their positions in the cipher. Putting together a chart showing the common factors, we'll start by considering period sizes between 4 and 13. The only factor common to all of our triplets is 6. Assuming that our cipher is period 6, we are done with step 1. For step 2, write out the message in columns 6 deep to create our Caesar shifted groups. Note, the message is 276 letters long. The first 120 letters should be enough, but I'll use the entire message to illustrate the step better. Let's pick the first group and perform a letter frequency count, then graph the letter distributions, and compare them to the French distribution chart, ignoring the letter W. This is a Gransfeld cipher, so we only need to shift the graph a maximum of nine places left to find a match.
the best match seems to be with Shift 4. It's not great because the percentage of E's is too low, and we have too many D's. But with 46 letters per group, our sample size is still pretty small. Either way, this is the end of step two. Let's try deciphering the message with a key of four and five blanks. We can always come back and try working with the other shifts if we need to. Okay, nothing too outlandish in our decrypt so far, but nothing eye-catchingly good either. For our probable word placement step, Vern says that if a proper name is going to be in the message, it has to be at the beginning of the paragraph like a salutation, or the end like a signature. Our hero's real name is Yoam de Costa, so let's try placing that first to see if Vern is correct. If we fail, we can try Diamants or Rio de Janeiro. First, note that Yoam de Costa is 11 letters long almost double the length of our period. If we write it out in lines of period length, the letters are mostly paired up. We have a five out of six chance that we've already deciphered one of the pairs of letters. Do we have a JC pair here? Surprisingly, yes, yes we do. Now let's finish off with the key extraction step assuming that we have placed the probable word correctly, and there's no guarantee that we have. Let's take the 11 letters above the probable word, subtract Yoam de Costa from them, and see what we get. We already know that N minus J and G minus C are both 4. We have R minus O twice, so we can solve for both at one time. R minus O is 18 minus 15, is 3. Continuing, C minus A is 3 minus 1, is 2. R minus M is 18 minus 13, is 5. E minus D is 5 minus 4, is 1. D minus A is 4 minus 1, is 3. U minus S is 21 minus 19, is 2. Z minus T is 25 minus 20, is 5. B minus A is 2 minus 1, is 1. Because the probable words are 11 letters total, and almost twice the period length, we can expect the key to repeat itself, which it does. This is just further proof that we're on the right track. So we finished step three in writing out the cipher with the partial key, and step four in placing Yoam da Costa and recovering our full key. That just leaves step five. Write out the full plaintext message with our recovered key, 432513. with word breaks and punctuation. Translated to English. The real author of the robbery of the diamonds and of the murder of the soldiers who escorted the convoy committed during the night of the 22nd of January, 1826, was thus not Yoam de Costa, unjustly condemned to death. It was I, the wretched servant of the administration of the Diamond District. Yes, I alone, who signed this with my true name, Ortega. From the plain text, we can see that we actually had a large number of probable word attack points. Along with de Costa's name and the French word for diamonds, we also had the date of the crime and the crime itself, and Ortega's position in the Diamond District administration. We don't get Ortega's name in the story until the very last moment, so we can't use that as a probable word. But as can be seen, 
we don't need it to solve Verne's unsolvable cipher. If you want to read The Giant Raft yourself, I put the link in the description below. That's it for now. See you at the next bookshop. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.